everyone, welcome to our newly converted saloon area. We're sort of part way through the refit. We don't know what part, <laughs> because it's the nature of refits. But we're going crazy to get it done at the moment, but it is, it's, the interior is coming along. Yeah. What's this video, we're having a bit of a look at. Yeah, well last week we you did. saw us building the cabinets for our galley, and also we built the same doors, cabinets for the saloon down here, sliding doors. But we did something a little bit different for this area and the video is going to explain why we did it and the reasons why. Mm. And we're also going to look at the finishing um, trim for our quarter berths. We wanted to make them look a lot more attractive than yeah, what they were. Yeah, instead of just a, a jigsawed hole cut in the, in the <laughs> side of the boat. Yeah. You can see at the moment we don't have any uh, any windows. We've yeah. actually pulled the boat out of the water. Yeah. Now that it's starting to warm up, we can we can paint the exterior of the boat and we're going to get some nice polycarbonate windows here which is um, super strong yeah. they'll be nice and clear we'll have more light i'm really light. looking forward to getting those windows in <laughs> so but that's that's, that's all in the, in the future, future. <laughs> and so so are these so i can't yeah you can't, can't see hide these. Them. <laughs> yes no. you're going to have to wait for next week for those so <laughs> all right well let's um roll the tape welcome to free range sailing for those of you that are new here, our boat Marul is a Clansman 30. She's a fiberglass 30 foot masthead sloop built in New South Wales in 1969. Troy bought her seven years ago in Cairns and sailed her around the top of Australia all the way to Perth. Three and a half years ago, we sailed north from Perth to circumnavigate the Australian continent together, filming our cruising adventures and attending to any essential maintenance along the way. We are currently in lockdown in Tasmania, the southernmost part of the continent, where we've decided to carry out a long overdue refit. If you want to be notified of all our weekly refit videos over the coming months, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button. So here's our quarter berth, and at the moment, they've looked ugly for a long time. So our friend Paul came and gave us um, a bit of hardwood decking, and it's, it's a really nice deep timber but it's not the right shape for anything we want to do, but it's a good width for um, trimming this. So what I'm going to do is we'll just use a bit of that MDF. We'll make a stencil of this. And then if I go to the workshop and I've got access to a bandsaw, I'll make a nice timber surround for this. And then this, this will be nicely trimmed rather than just being a hole in the boat. Now our MDF that we use to make the quarter berths, which I'm sitting on, We've recycled them. They just break bits off, and I basically am just going to lay them, line them there, and then while Pascal supports it, I'll go on the other side and trace the outline perfectly. You could do this with cardboard. This is MDF or medium density fiberboard if you don't hang around hardware stores and you haven't seen it before. You have to pay for this, unlike cardboard that you can get out of like any old dumpster. But the advantage of this stuff is it's very stable. Cutting it out on a bandsaw and shaping it with sandpaper is really easy. It, cardboard just doesn't have the same qualities. Okay, I'm going to get in there and trace it. hold it. Yep. I had Pascal um, holding this. Whenever you're using MDF to trace, um, if, you, if you let it come off whatever you're tracing, the pencil can sometimes go like that and you'll get a false line. So it's really important that it, it holds against whatever you're, you know, like you're using to transfer that line on. But that's pretty good. So we can um, we can go now, cut that out, get some sandpaper, get it exactly to the line, and that will tell us exactly what this shape is, and we'll be able to make our timber trim away from the boat in a in a nice workshop with good ergonomics. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll come back and we know that it'll fit. To get an even width on our timber combing, we used a piece of scrap wood with a nail punch through it, a thumb width from the V that we cut out on the bandsaw for a pencil to go in. So I'm just sanding our MDF templates here. We're going to use these to cut a perfect template out of ply. And that way we can 
cut it all perfect, take it to the boat and check that it fits before we do our real copy out of Mervale. And you can see that it's been cut, we've cut it into four bits, we've labelled it, but we don't have a big enough piece of ply to cut it all in one, so we've had to cut it into bits. Okay, we're at this stage. I'm just screwing those MDF templates onto some ply. We're following it on the router, and then we'll take this to the boat and make sure it fits. And then with the ply, that's even easier to work than the final timber that we're gonna use, which is quite valuable. We've taken the patterns off them. There's little screw holes left behind. So our very first check is to just match up these the pieces and make sure that the edges line up and everything is perfectly square and there's not like sort of, <laughs> you know, gaps. We don't want it sort of like that. We want to make sure they butt up really well. The line is almost invisible, so that's really great. So now we'll just take it to the boat and we'll make sure it's going to fit, but it looks like it will. It's good so far. So if that butts up, yeah, that follows that all right. There we go, we can see that that is going to be great. All right, so that's good. Back at Lance's workshop, I traced our ply templates onto our feature timber and cut them with a bandsaw. Once cut, I stuck the timber back onto our ply templates so that Troy could get the exact shape on the router table. The routing's done. And I've just been taking off the template with ply. And now I'm just going to put them together on the bench and make sure they all match up. Yeah, let's see how it looks. And then Troy's going to use the router to round off the outside edge. Yep, I'll put them through a round over bit. And then I'm going to spend a little bit of time just sanding <laughs> them up and making them look nice. Hours. Hopefully yeah. the grain kind of looks nice. It would look amazing, trust me. Okay. Yep. It's going to be great. Well, it all fits, which is great. So um, I'm just going to relabel these bits and then I'm going to put an arrow around the outer edge to make sure that Troy rounds off the right side, right mm -hmm. piece, and yep. at the front as well. Rounding, rounding off the wrong side now would be a disaster. It would be really bad. In the end, we decided to round off both sides of the front of the timber combing and we were quite pleased with the result. Now we're back at the drill press and we've just set this up because Passy's going to get busy. What we want to have is some recessed screw holes because we're going to cover the screws with wooden plugs. So what I've done is, again, we've got the, we've got the drill press and I laid up the work and I just set the depth so it stops there. And I've got this fence, so we've adjusted our distance from this outside edge, and that'll mean all the holes, no matter where they are, will be the same distance from this as a reference point. So all we've done is we've got a couple more of these that haven't been drilled by Pascal yet, and we just came in by just over an inch, 30 mil from both sides. Then we me measured that distance and we divided that in two, and then we measured that distance and we divided that in two. And so that pencil mark is the only bit that we have to really worry about because every other distance is set. This distance and that distance. So Pasky can basically just go along, feed this through, putting all those holes down, and we'll have a whole bunch of recessed holes. When we get to the boat, we'll drill those out and when our screw heads will be nicely recessed down inside there. Um, and then you know what? We can just cover them with a timber plug and we won't have to be looking at screw heads anymore. That could be great. So we've got Pasky, she's, uh, she's done all the holes. Now she's got to make the plugs.
Now, a thing that we've been wrestling with is this area here. Um, because all of these lockers, they're built, there's an angle up here. These sides are not straight up and down vertical. And so each one of these orifices is really sort of <laughs> wonky and um, all over the place. The previous um, solution to that was just to get a bit of ply, put a whole sheet of it along here and just rough cut it around there and then just have hinging doors. And we never really found it that satisfying. And it was, it was really tough to sort of come up with something that looked any good. This is an old solution, but when we were um, at the Wooden Boat Show and we went to see our friend Ian from Mackenzie Marine, we went to see his uncle's boat where he sort of, um, he really had free reign to let his, his woodworking with his uncle um, go wild. And one of the solutions was drop boards. So for these, what we've done is, I just got a, a nice big chunky wood, ran it through a router, um, and cut a nice big channel in and rounded it off and made some of these boards. So these are all, all these are only just um, shaped at the moment. They haven't even really been finished sanded. So I'll show you. These can now just drop in here. So what we get out of this is everything's quite secure where we're in a seaway, really great ventilation, so mould won't be an issue. I think they look quite nice, so, and that's an important consideration. It's a bit, very, very simple, no maintenance um, solution. So we've got a couple more. I'll, I'll just give you the, the whole effect. With this middle one, I actually dropped in a little, little packer at the bottom, and that's just because this is lower than the rest of them, and I just wanted them roughly at the same height. So they just drop in like this one. One concern I have, this one's got a little bit of twist in it because of the nature of the boat. So these ones don't rattle and they're quite firm in there, but these ones, they could potentially rattle and annoy us. So we'll do something, we'll just put, um, I've got a little bit of rubber door sealer and I'm just going to put it in there so that they won't go back and forward and be a bit of a pest because we're very sensitive about noises on the boat. And finally this one here. So I just, I just, trimmed all of these to match each other um, just you know with a handsaw and of course a little palm plane and everything fits quite nicely like that and the nice thing about this system is if we are in a seaway and we want to get something out of there instead of opening a door and sort of trying to hold things out as you go for it you can just sort of pull that out and you've still got quite a bit of restraint and you can dig around in there. They only go as high as here because you very rarely stack a, a locker right to the very top. So when we pull these out, now that whole locker will be exposed and really easy to wipe out and clean because we've painted this. You might be able to fit like your diaries and books and stuff in that one because it's quite deep. I'm thinking about making a little sort of magazine wrap oh, for diaries yeah. and stuff that's, got, that's going to live up here. Just a really low profile slatted thing for mm. for diaries. So there we go. That's that's a solution that we've chosen. Um, and, you know, it might come in handy if you're, you're ever thinking about um, doing a similar thing. On Ian's uncle's boat, Utica 2, uh, they used a variation on this system. It was better finished, um, but it was this sort of thing for their anchor locker. But I think this is a really nice solution, so we're just showing it to you. We didn't show you building it because it's just so obvious, isn't it? Just cut these shapes out of wood mm. um, and screw them in there. But look, that's that's really nicely done. While we're talking about drop boards today, I'll, we'll just have a quick look in the, in the battery compartment. It's nothing groundbreaking there either. I wanted a, a way of restraining the batteries that's easy to sort of get out of the way so I can, I can pull the batteries in and out easily because that wasn't the case before I had to dismantle this if I wanted to get the batteries out. So I've used drop boards and we'll have a bit of a look at them. But basically I got some of this old pine that used to be uh, used in the construction of the house I used to own in Cairns. <laughs> been carrying it around for a while. This used to be one big board and it held everything back before, um, but we took it to Lance's and cut it into strips and I just gave it this loaf of bread profile and that's so I can reach down and I can, I've got a finger grip. There's something to actually hang on to so I can pull them out because that's, it's quite tight in there. So there's two of those and when they're in there, they hold the battery nice and confined. 
So what we have in here is the starter, the starter battery um, and half of the house bank. The space in between batteries and any spare bits I, I've just made up with these 18mm um, marine grade offcut plywood packers. So I've got a nice slippery epoxy side there for where it's contacting the actual battery itself. So by making sure the batteries absolutely can't move, none of the um, None of the plastic casing rubs on anything, wears out and spills battery acid through your boat. So actually keeping your batteries nice and still is a really important thing to do. Um, you don't want them to you know, be crashing around in a space. That, that gives us rise to that old saying, a, a loose cannon, because as soon as something gets momentum on a boat, it can, it can punch through things. I know that that board's strong enough to hold those batteries because it's been doing it for the last seven years. But now, now that it's um, those separate boards, it should be a lot easier to manage in there. So all I need to do now is clean that space up, obviously wire up the batteries. And I'm, I've just put, put off painting all of this back area until we've, we've finished adding any storage we want to um, and things like that. Looks good, doesn't it, Pasky? Mm-hmm. I've just two screws in each bit, just secured the arch here just so we can just sand everything in place and blend it all in we haven't hit it with epoxy resin or anything yet just having a look at how it um, how it goes in but I think that that has made a real um, difference to when it was just a raw cut bit of ply and the other thing I like about it is because we followed the the arc of the ply and then um, you know, Pascal band sorted out and we we went with it like that. It's got a bit of an organic look instead of being like the perfect curves. There's just a little, just a tiny little mm -hmm. bit of lumpiness to it. Yeah. Those little imperfections make it look, you know, handmade. So Pascal and I were having a discussion. What are we going to do? Because wood trimming this is very awkward as well. And it's very hard to get it to look good. So this here is packed with builder's wedges and screwed through there. So it's solid. But the builder's wedges give us exactly the right angle for everything to be nice and square. And then I've got this bit of off cut and we'll put it across this face. Obviously I'm going to cut just a radius um, bit just here to make everything look quite nice and I'll round off the edges. So we're putting this little bit of timber in here rather than start up the little laminate trimmer router that I've got and making just an enormous amount of dust and mess. I think I'll just I'll just put this profile on with a with my little palm plane here. It's been with me for some time because when you're fitting when you're fitting uh, timber trim to a boat, just having a little plane is a really good way of just just sneaking up on on what you want. So I want I want this to just be a very subtle profile. Um, so I've just taken off a couple of flats with the plane. And then I've just got this 120 grit and just give it a bit of a sand. So that's going to save me a bit of time because I won't have to come back and remove any machining marks. So I don't have any um, nice sharp chisels anymore, which is a bit of a, a bit of a pain. But nonetheless, I, uh, this this little curve here, um, I just outline that with pencil I, I cut that with a multi-tool and now I'll just again clean up the blade marks on that. These wooden plugs are coming in really handy, the ones that we made at Lance's there on the drill press. Uh, starting to get few, through a few, so I better make some more up. These plugs here, um, I've used the same timber. I don't want contrasting ones. We've made contrasting ones for the uh, for the quarter berths, 
Now these timber plugs, they're just made out of the same um, tassioak as, as this decorative strip is. So they should blend in reasonably well. You'll still see them, but they won't be really eye-catching. As I'm sanding, you can see old machine marks that were never, <laughs> never sanded out, eh? Yeah, right. So we'll get them out, and um, by the time we go through 120 grit and then 180, all those will be gone. Before I applied varnish on the old timber backing, Troy applied a protective layer of epoxy resin. It really felt like we were giving this old timber a new lease of life. So here's our timber trim. It's looking all beautiful. It's not varnished yet, but we have put its first coat of epoxy on. So with that first coat of epoxy, you can really see the beautiful color and um, the beautiful grain on there. And we were fortunate enough to be gifted some Huon pine. So we have a little reminder of Tazzy, thanks to Lance at his workshop. There's still a bit to be done in this space, so we have to stay tuned. It's not quite finished, but we're really happy with the results so far. Well, thank you for joining us again this week. Hit the, look, you know the drill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you liked it, hit the like button, all that stuff. But anyway, look, what we really want to do is say thank you to everyone that's made it possible um, so far, but also in particular, yes, we are much more comfortable now because our friend and patron, Steve, made these, didn't he, Pascal? Yes, he made us these lovely settee cushions out of Sunbrella and they are bomb proof. They're comfortable, they're awesome. Mm. We love them. They're really great yeah. and they're much more comfortable than the bare plywood that I'm lying on at the moment. <laughs> so we'll sort that out later. But I'm inspired by these cushions, they're fantastic. So thank you Steve. If you join us next week, we will be revealing what is above Tro's head right now. Yes, electricity so. and woodwork combined. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs>